To simply put it, the Mets in the early 90s were a mess. And although I knew the Mets were disastrous, especially what was going on outside the diamond, there was one item on the field that had my attention and really changed my view about a stat, as Anthony Young was going to set the MLB record for most consecutive losses by a pitcher, a record he didn't deserve. Anthony Young began his MLB career with the Mets in 1991 and had a six-year MLB career. But then sadly in 2017, the right-handed pitcher left us too soon due to a brain tumor. Apparently Young was a tremendous person and teammate, someone people liked to be around and had a great sense of humor in which he needed during the 92 and 93 seasons. That's because during this period, Anthony Young set a major league record that still stands today of losing 27 straight decisions. But because of Anthony Young and then Roger Pavlik's 1996 All-Star season, I understood that a pitcher's win-loss record can perhaps be somewhat misleading. So I want to talk about Young in the 93 season because of all the strangeness and all these losing decisions that kept building up as it became news while watching games and listening to the announcers reading scores and stat lines. I remember Harry Carey would talk a lot about Young's ongoing streak during Cubs games. However, from what I saw on the mound and from his stats, it seemed to me that Anthony Young really wasn't pitching that poorly and was a decent pitcher. It was just strangeness and horrible luck. As a kid, I saw having an ERA under 3 as being the benchmark of being a top pitcher and then being around 3.5, that's being a pretty good pitcher, better than average in the National League. As I remember Anthony Young having an ERA around that mid-3 mark at times during the 93 season. According to Baseball Reference, during the 1993 season, Young had an ERA plus of 107, with 100 being average. But furthermore, during the losing streak, which began in 1992, Young would be a starter and help out in the bullpen, where in 1992, Young converted 12 straight save opportunities that included throwing 23 and two thirds scoreless innings. And then in 93, from the beginning of the season to May 25, Young would pitch out of the bullpen and have a respectable 3.32 ERA. Then had a poor outing on May 28, but then from early June to early July, Young would start 7 games where he won at least 6 innings in all those starts except for 1. And I would say Young pitched solidly during this period that included 2 really good outings for Chicago and San Diego, but resulted in 0 wins. Then was back to the bullpen, and then finally June 28, Young snapped his streak of losing 27 straight decisions, in a very odd way giving up an unearned run due to poor bunt defense execution 9th, but then down by a run in the bottom of the ninth, the Mets scored two runs and thus Anthony Young finally got a W. Anthony Young would then pitch for the Cubs the next two seasons and according to his ERA plus statistic, he was a better than average pitcher. Then Young would pitch a season with Houston and that'd be the career of Anthony Young. Unfortunately for Young, he is known as a pitcher for having the MLB record of losing 27 consecutive decisions despite not pitching that poorly but then it made me begin to realize that a pitcher's win-loss record may be an overrated stat. Thank you so much for watching this 90 sports video. I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, check out the links below like Patreon. Thank you so much.